get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Second down, six Throwing to the end zone Touchdown, Presbyterians Joey Gilkey, the tight end and play fake, looking to roll. Griffin and his pass, Gilkey complete. Gilkey hurdles the defender. That could be an ESPN highlight as he uh, makes his way for a first down. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of RX Bar. And um, they sold to Kellogg for $600 million, but I talked to them and how they built that company up. Really interesting. They're, they bootstrap that. It's amazing. And the P90X founder, Tony Horton, talks about how he made money as a street mime before selling hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, Joey, I love talking about the, the not so great stories. You know, he would put his hat on the street um, to make food and rent money. That's how he made money when he went cross country. Um, Baby Einstein founder um, was a cancer assassin twice. She, she suffered cancer and beat it. Um, Atari founder, Nolan Bushnell, talked about how when Steve, he was Steve Jobs' mentor, Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. That'd be a lot of money leaving on the table. Um, so check out inspiredinsider.com for more interviews. Um, the episode today is brought to you by Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Um, at Rise25, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners. Not to mis- be mistaken by Joey's Dream 500, which I read, I'm like, I got to talk to this guy because he has a Dream 500. He, he just showed us up with a Dream 500 and we're like, we're only Dream 100. But we create a systemized incoming referral pipeline, which generates ROI using a podcast. And podcasting, in a lot of, for many years, people didn't know this. Podcasting is much more personal for me because it's not just about your business. It's about you leaving a legacy for yourself and your guests. And it was inspired by Um, my grandfather, who was a Holocaust survivor, and he and his brother were in concentration camps in Nazi Germany, and they were the only members of their family to survive. But his words and legacy live on because an interview, um, an interview with the Holocaust Foundation, they did with him, and I could watch it every year. I could watch it every week if I wanted to. I do watch it every year, and it's on my about page on my website. So um, yes, podcasting can help your business, but it also helps you and your guests leave a legacy. And I do personally credit it as the single best thing I've done for my business and my life outside of meeting my wife, because she doesn't like when I say that, but because of all the amazing relationships I've made. And we handle 99% of the work so our clients can focus on the best use of their time, which is relationships. And our clients will range from a Berkshire Hathaway company to agencies, to lawyers, consultants, SaaS companies, and other B2B businesses. And we make sure you get ROI. We've been working with podcasters since 2009. So I believe if you have a business, you should have a podcast period, kind of like you have a website. Um, but if you have thought about starting a podcast, do it. Email us if you have questions at support at rise25media.com. I am excited to introduce today's guest. And thank you, Ian Garlic, for recommending today's guest and talking about today's guest. Um, and today we have Joey Gilkey, founder of tribeprospecting.com. And what they do is they help businesses land six and seven figure contracts with their dream 500 clients through account-based selling. And this is an interesting fact. If they don't deliver, they personally buy you a Tesla. And that's actually in their contract. And talk about an amazing risk reversal. You know, Joey, as I read your stuff, I think reading your stuff, you know, describe how you describe your business is a marketing lesson in itself. So people should check out your LinkedIn. They should check out your website and they have a, and we're going to break some of these things down. They have a multi-discipline, multi-channel, hyper-personalized, highly targeted account-based sales outreach to the list of your 500 dream clients over the course of a year. And we will find out more about what that means. And they do what most outbound sales agencies are not willing or able to do. And we will break all these things down. And fun facts about Joey on a personal note, which I find fascinating. We may or may not get into these things, but he played college football. So you can watch highlights on ESPN. I mean, YouTube uh, about his highlight uh, football days. He was a theater major and he also has a genetic mutation, which we may or may not talk about. And that's 
that's, a, you know, I'm, I'm not joking around when I say he has actually has a genetic mutation, but Joey, thank you for, for joining me. Jeremy, thank you for that incredible intro. I always ask this, Joey, um, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been a low moment you had to push through in your career? Mm. And then what's been a proud moment on the, on the other end? What's, what's been a yeah, low moment? I think, hmm, low moment, that's, that's an easy one for me. My wife has a twin brother. Um, name's Brendan. Um, probably one of the most inspiring individuals I've ever had the privilege of, of meeting. Hmm. I'm at the try not to choke up here. Um, You're allowed to. But <laughs> two hmm. and a half years ago, he was diagnosed. So he's, he was uh, 31 at the time, diagnosed with stage four hmm. non-small cell lung cancer. And uh, it metastasized to his whole body. Mm. It was full lung coverage, kidney, bone, a uh, couple other places, and then 24 brain tumors. Jeez. And um, 31, super healthy, never smoked. Um, just one of those lottery draws of, oh, congrats, you terrible. won the lottery of cancer. <laughs> and so yeah. um, that was just a really difficult time for the family. Uh, it was an encouraging time because I think it drew us closer. Um, and, and praise the Lord, he's, he's now cancer free. Um, two and a half years later. Really? And, yeah. Holy and, cow. And way better shape than I am. Yeah. His, I mean, the, the likelihood of him being alive is uh, a percentage of a percentage. Um, but we, we did some crazy research. We felt like we were introduced to some people that uh, we didn't deserve to be introduced to. And we had a, an incredible team kind of help push him through this. Wow difficult diagnosis. And, um, it was a hard time for me because it, it just being transparent, it, it, it forced me to start questioning what I believed about, you know, my faith and, and, and people who had, you know, he's he at the time was 31 years old, has four kids under the age of six, mm. uh, beautiful wife. He's a leader in the church, like all these good things. And, and so it, at first was really challenging for me and it bled into you like know, does God from, exist. Yeah. Just kind of like, does he even, if he does exist, does he care? Like, or are mm. we just all existing here for the purpose of his pleasure? And, and I came out on the other end of that saying, absolutely not. I'm more convicted about my mm. beliefs, but it, it took me walking through some difficult things with me and my family, my wife's side um, to really realize that. And I think in the time where it was the low, you asked the question about being the lowest, it was just, questioning that and when I when I question that which I believe is at my core and, and that's my faith and my walk with the Lord for me as I question that it bled into my physical health my mm. work you know all these different things or aspects of my life it bled into that and uh, it led me down some depression paths of just why am I doing this you know I wouldn't say I ever got to the suicidal stage but I definitely um I was depressed and, and I didn't really understand. I didn't have any emotion. You know, I was starting to balloon up, <laughs> eating everything in sight to comfort. And, hmm. um, you know, started abusing, you know, alcohol a lot more and stuff like that. So I think it took me walking through that to come out even stronger. And I would say I didn't even, I didn't become stronger because he was healed. Um, I became stronger because I was forced to face questions that maybe I hadn't asked myself before. Hmm. And, um, yes, him being healed and yes, him going through uh, that difficult time and watching his wife and four kids have to walk through that. And my wife, who's his twin brother, which you can imagine the relationship there. Right. You know, it was just really difficult. It was a dark time. And um, so that was, that was a low point. You know, it was met with a high point, obviously of him being cleared of any evidence of disease and he's in that's, better shape than I am. That's amazing. You know, he's, yeah, he's got a great life. Um, what did you change was, afterwards after going through that? Well, it was, I mean, I could see, be like, listen, I give up, like, forget about this hard work thing. I mean, I'm a, you yeah. know, let's just go on a right. beach somewhere and relax. But I mean, that's not exactly. your DNA, that's not well, your honestly, DNA, but. It kind of did though. When you look at my, my goals at the time, my goals. So I walked through, he was diagnosed two and a half years ago. I'd say that the, the next year, year and a half was really wrestling and having hard times. And that's when I started developing these, these other, you know, self-centered goals of just accumulation and all these different things, again, aren't bad. Um, and I would say uh, all at one time, it's just this tidal wave of change for me of like, no, I'm so convinced of what I believe. Mm. I believe that God is for our good. Um, I believe that um, these things are gifts in disguise 
you know, like he would even say that. And that's been encouraging to watch him walk through is like how strong he stayed through the whole thing and stronger than most people around him who are trying to encourage him. And, um, yeah, I don't know what the original question was, but I think it yeah. was, I mean, it's, it's you know, how you changed and it sounds like you changed your goal yeah. and how you thought and still about wrestle. Yeah. Still wrestle through things. And, you know, now it's, you know, I let work get ahead. And I don't take care of my body, you know, and I'll eat what I want to eat instead of eat what I should eat and do those type of things. And it's just a process. You know, I think this life yeah. is a, a process and there's a lot of different iterations that we'll go through in our life of changing things and, and, and growing as humans. Um, yeah. But I'm super thankful for that time. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, it's it just, we should all, you know, it just makes us think about being grateful, being appreciative for what we have. And sure. so yeah, I appreciate you sharing Absolutely. that story. Even though it's hard to share, I'm sure. Um, a proud moment. What's been a proud moment in yeah, your career? Proud. Man, this has been this year, I think. Um, obviously, the diagnosis coming back with no evidence of disease back in yeah. February was awesome. But um, or January. But uh, I think uh, outside of that, a uh, really proud moment for me was just l- it's kind of interesting. I've been able to look at the team that I've built, especially the leadership team. I'm just, I'm incredibly humbled and, and thankful uh, that I've built a team of just rock stars. And mm-hmm. uh, I can't necessarily attribute that to me. There's been people who've made incredible introductions for me and stars have aligned in certain ways to where I can land some of these key, key players on my team. There's a moment, I can't think of the exact day or when it was exactly, but it was a little while ago, sometime this year. Or I sat there and I just kind of sat back. I was like, I just don't deserve a team like this. Like this is incredibly humbling that people would want to leave their careers, leave their, I mean, the two guys I'm thinking of specifically on my leadership team left their actual business. They were running a business. Uh, one was a, an operations consultant. He's essentially a fractional COO. And then the other is essentially a, an incredible world-class copywriter who writes for ghost writes for people all over the country the names that we know Mm -hmm. and they said they wanted to give that up to be a part of what we're growing Mm. and uh that was just a humbling moment to sit back and say wow there's there is uh there's something special that we're doing at tribe and Mm -hmm. people want to be a part of it and i certainly don't deserve it but i will i will take it and be grateful for it how did you relinquish sales because i would think was that a really hard thing for you internally yeah internally i i being honest, I still love it. <laughs> I still no, I know, it. but you don't probably do it as much as you do. No, I, I, I close, I close deals. And I develop the relationships. Um, I mean, I'm, I hate doing this, but I'm flying down to, to Savannah, Georgia here in a couple of days just to go pitch for one 24 hour period. But I, I feed off of that. I love closing, but yeah, outside of that, the good thing about being a, an outsourced account based sales organization is I have all the resources internally to do it for myself. <laughs> so right. I essentially, we can scale me by doing what we do for our clients, but doing it for me. And so I actually don't mind. The only thing I, I don't like about me relinquishing a lot of the top of funnel sales, so lead generation, that kind of stuff, is I feel like I start to lose a little bit of what's going on Finger today, on the what's pulse, working. Right. Yeah. And so I have to, on a regular basis, re-engage my team to kind of ask them, like, hey, what experiments we run lately? What are we doing? Um, also, we're, this is a something we're launching soon called Lead Lab, which is really just we're essentially going to compile all of our resources and processes and uh, experiments into a free membership portal that people can join, um, so they can look at experiments that have failed and experiments that have succeeded mm. and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I have to have my team kind of educate me still on what's working and what's not, because yeah. uh, what was working two years ago when I was doing a lot of the copywriting and the actual yeah. sales was not anymore. Yeah. I mean, the fundamentals is probably similar, but there may be some, yeah. So yeah, tactics come and go. Yeah. Um, but fundamentals being a human in the sales process, I think that's one of our key core values is just be a human. <laughs> so that Joy. no matter what the medium is. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your expertise, your wisdom, your journey. Um, everyone should check out tribeprospecting.com. Check out what they're doing. Um, maybe we'll convince them just to offer the dream 500. Um, but if not, just if, if you want to actually engage with the dream 500, contact them. So thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Jeremy. I appreciate it. What I got, you can't buy.
Right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.